Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and Jatnat Video Podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today in the video, guys, we're going to be talking about wings. Why are they placed below the body on some aircraft? Why are they placed above on some? Why do they have strange angles like on the Anton of 225? And uh, which type should you be choosing for your flight training? Stay tuned. Wind 31016, right, right. Delta this video is brought to you in cooperation with Brilliant.org. Now, if you're still struggling to find that perfect Christmas gift to that niece who's always asking about, you know, how things work, well then, use the link here below. That will give you 20% off any gift certificate that you buy from Brilliant.org. And I guarantee you that it will be the most useful present that you will ever give to your niece. So, today on the video guys, we're going to be talking about wings, specifically where they are placed. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to talk about which aircraft that you should be choosing for your flight training. Does it really matter whether or not you're going for a Cessna, which has the wings mounted on top of the fuselage, or a Diamond or a Piper 28 that has it below? Now, the quick answer to that question is no. It just doesn't matter. There are some differences to them. There are some pros and cons from both of them. Uh, specifically, uh, I used to do my training on the Cessna 152, 172, 182 and 182 retractable gear. So basically the whole Cessna family. Now the Cessnas are great when you are starting your flight training because, because of the fact that the wings are mounted high, it means that you have great visibility below. You'll easily see traffic that is climbing up towards you. And also when you're out uh, cross-country flying and you're looking for airport, for example, it's easy to spot the whole you know, area around you because there's no wings in the way. The downside to that is that as you are turning, of course, the wing is now coming down and it's obstructing your view. So when you're in your traffic circuit and you're doing touch and go landings, which you will do many, many, many of during your flight training, well, then that might not be optimal. On the other hand, when you're flying a uh, Piper 28, which I've also been flying, you will be able to see everything you know, above the wings, you will see traffic that might be descending down towards you. And also, when you're in the traffic circuit, then as you're turning, you're actually increasing your visibility, which will make it easier for you to, uh, to do the maneuver. So, pros and cons, basically. Um, there are slight differences in the handling as well. The, um, uh, the low-mounted uh, wings might have a slight different um, handling feel when you get into the ground effect during landing, but these are pretty much, you know, not something that you need to worry about. From systems point of view, the lower wing designs tend to have a little bit more complex fuel system because of the fact that you need to pump fuel from the wings up into the engine, while the, um, the top ones will have a natural fall of the fuel down towards the, uh, the engine, but once again, very, very small. Now, what you need to think about, what you should be looking at when it comes to choosing a flight school based on their aircraft type is how well are they maintained? How fresh are the aircraft? Have they upgraded the avionics? Uh, how is the maintenance department? These are important things. So whether or not the wings are high or low, doesn't matter. How fresh, how well maintained and how good the aircraft are, that will be important. Now, when it comes to the placement of wings on bigger air transport category aircraft, um, it's a little bit different. Okay, now you would have all been out watching air, aircraft at an airport and you've noticed that most of the um, aircraft that have the uh, wings mounted on top of the fuselage tends to be smaller turboprop aircraft. Uh, th there is a very good reason for this. And that is that these smaller type aircraft, the uh, uh, commuter category aircraft, they tend to be used in smaller airports. Okay, the smaller airport might not have as much um, technical equipment, uh, less personnel and so on. So the fact that these are flying with the high wing design means that they are close to the ground, it's easier to load them, it's also easier to board the passengers, it's less steps and stairs needed. So this tends to be one of the main reasons why you see the high wing designs on commuter type aircraft. Um, you also have the, the downside then of the engines that are fitted to the wings being higher up. 
So from a maintenance perspective, that can be a problem. You will probably also have seen that the turboprop aircraft tends to have a bit of thicker metal next to the, uh, the wings. And that is because when the aircraft flies into icing conditions and they, uh, they de-ice the propellers, then some of the ice might be thrown in towards the body of the aircraft where you guys are sitting. And that's why they need reinforcements um, around, you know, basically the line of the, um, the propeller. So the bigger the aircraft gets, when you get up to the sizes of, for example, the 737 or the Airbus 320, well then you will see that the low mounted wing design will become more prevalent. Um, that has to do with the fact that it's easier to get access to the engines, for example. The engines are hanging below the wings. Um, it's easier for maintenance personnel to access them. They don't need huge ladders or steps to do so. It's also... Um, the fact that the way that the aircraft is designed with a very sturdy wing box at the bottom of the aircraft from a um, from a purely constructional point of view, it's easier to lift the load than to have the load hanging below the wings. So this is probably one of the main reasons why you see that it's so common with the, uh, the low mounted wing designs on bigger aircraft type. But then, of course, you will immediately ask me, well, what about the Antonov 225, the biggest aircraft in the world? That has high design. Yes, um, that is a different thing, all right? The Antonov 225, which there's only one flying version of at the moment, um, that was built as an extremely heavy lifter. So when you have an aircraft that is built to, to, to um, fly tanks around, well, then the fact that you can have the body very close to the ground, as in a very low landing gear, will become more important. So the, the, um, uh, the Antonov 225 was also made in order to carry the Buran, the, um, the space shuttle, the Russian space shuttle around. And the wings would then be kind of used as a, um, uh, as a way to hold the space shuttle up. So the Antonov 225 is a special case. Uh, but also, if you do have cargo aircraft, if you do have cargo aircraft that has to fly into, for example, military aircraft that has to fly into gravel field, for example, um, or into the jungle somewhere, well, then the fact that the wings are high and you can have the engines uh, higher up and away from the uh, from the ground is going to be very important. So there are some benefits to having the the wings high, especially if you're going to fly into circumstances like that. Now, the next thing that I want to cover um, is going to be a little bit more technical. So, you would have seen that there are different angles to, uh, the, um, to the aircraft wings. The 737, for example, has a slight upward angle on the wings. This tends to be prevalent on almost all low-mounted uh, designs. Uh, but on the Antonov 225, which is a very good example of a wing that is angled a lot downwards, What's the reason for this? Okay. Now, in order to understand this, guys, I'm going to have to become a little bit technical, so bear with me. And if you do have questions about this, as always, send them in below. So, the first thing that we're going to talk about is, Pachi, is the angle of attack. Okay. You need to understand how uh, angle of attack works in order to understand the rest of this. So, the angle of attack is basically the angle that the um, relative air is coming on to an airfoil. Uh, if you have a higher angle of attack, well then the uh, lift that the airfoil will take out is going to be bigger until you reach a stall angle. So you can increase the angle of attack, get more and more lift until the aircraft stalls or the airfoil stalls. This is important when you, when you get to the angle of the wing. Okay? Um, aircrafts are constructed to be a perfect combination of roll, stable and unstable. And what I mean by that is that we want the aircraft to be able to return to its, um, its origin relatively easy, but we also don't want it to be so roll stable that it's hard to turn it. So when an aircraft goes into a bank, let's say that we've just banked the aircraft. Well, if we don't do anything else, the aircraft is going to start slipping down like this. This is called a side slip. And with a side slip, you will have air, relative air flowing over the aircraft and onto the wings, right? It will angle upwards over and 
downwards like this, just like, you know, any airfoil. Now, if you have the wings low, low mounted, like on the 737, for example, and if the wings would be completely straight without any angle, well then as the aircraft start banking and side slipping, what will happen is that you will have a slightly, because of the way that the air moves around the, um, the body, you will get a slightly higher angle of attack at the higher wing and a lower angle of attack at the lower wing. Okay. Now what that will do is that it will actually increase the rolling movement and the aircraft will be laterally unstable. It will roll more. As you roll, it will roll more. Okay. Now we don't want that. What we would like is for the aircraft to, if a roll is induced that we haven't induced, well then we want it to kind of by itself return. So what we can do then is what you see here. We can angle the wings. It's called a dihedral. So if we have a dihedral like this, when the same thing happens, the aircraft rolls and it gets into a side slip, because of the angle of the wing upward, it means that you will have slightly less angle of attack on the upward wing, slightly more angle of attack on the lower wing, and that will return the aircraft to its original position. So that is called a dihedral effect. Now, if you do the same on a high mounted wing like this, you will have the same thing. But on top of that, you have something called a pendulum effect, a keel effect. And that is the fact that you have most of the weight below the wing. So the center of gravity is very low. That will, when you get into a roll and a side slip like this, that will actually also cause a, um, a dihedral effect. It will also make the aircraft more stable. So if you have high mounted wings, the aircraft is naturally more roll stable. You with me so far? So this means that if you have this, if you have both angled upwards on the wings and the body below, well then you're starting to have a very stable aircraft. And if you on top of that have swept wings, like in the case of the Antonov 225, that also increases the dihedral effect what you end up having is an aircraft that is so roll stable that anytime you try to put aileron input in, the aircraft will want to go back. And that is not something we want. We want to be able to roll the aircraft and control it. So what the Russians did then, is they just turned it over, All right? Now you're getting something called an anhedral effect, like this. So now, because of the downward angle of the wing, the, when the aircraft starts slipping, side slipping, then all of a sudden you will have a higher angle of attack on the upward wing and the lower on the lower wing. So the aircraft will actually increase the bank angle. And that is because if not, the aircraft would be just too hard to control in the um, roll axis. Does that make sense? Now, now you're starting to get a, a feel for the kind of things that you're going to have to learn if you want to become a pilot, the kind of physics that are involved. We're talking um, more and more advanced aerodynamics here. And in order for you to understand what I'm talking about, you need to pay attention in school. You need to understand both physics and math because there are formulas connected to this that you do need to understand. Now, this is why I am so proud to have Brilliant.org as a sponsor. They've been sponsoring the channel throughout 2018. And I know that the quality of the product that they're giving to you will give you some tools to be better at exactly the kind of things that you need to be better at in order to be successful in your training. The way Brilliant works is that they will give you um, some puzzles to solve. Think Sudoku type as in brain teasers, stuff that you really need to think and you need to have some knowledge about the subject in order to, to solve it. They will become harder and harder and after a while you will come across something that you can't solve. And when that happens, Brilliant will then give you a technique to solve it. They will give you the knowledge needed, they will explain it to you and, and then they will help you to kind of divide the problem into sizable chunks that you can you know, solve individually, and by doing so, you can solve the entire problem. This is very similar to the way that we work if we come across a very complex problem in the cockpit. We also, you know, take in the information needed, divide it into the problems that needs to be solved, solve them individually to make sure that the outcome is positive. So this is why I want you to check out Brilliant if you haven't already, because they will give you the kind of 
thinking techniques that you need in order to be successful, not only in becoming a pilot, but when it comes to, you know, interviews or um, these kind of suitability tests that a lot of jobs are actually giving to their applicants right now. So use the link below, 20% off the annual fee. But once again, as always, it's completely free to go in and check it out. Now, at the end of the video, both me and Pachi want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, wherever you are out there in the world. It's been a fantastic 2018. I hope that I get to see all of you and hopefully even more of you during 2019. And come in and check out the uh, Mentor Aviation chat. I'm, I'm planning some really nice upgrades to the app very, very soon. It's completely free to download it. And I have the links to both iOS and Android here in the description of the video. Have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll see you next time. Bye. -bye.